certainly would ask that you might continue to pray for our service this morning, that God himself and the Lord Jesus Christ would be honored and that we'd be blessed to glean truth from his word that might be a benefit to us in our lives. As most of you know, over the last two years, uh, been a lot of fear come over a lot of people in the land. I've, I've preached on this a time or two, but it still burdens my mind to touch upon the idea of fear and what God's word says about it. There are places in the word of God that says we're to fear God, to stand in awe of God. And uh, anyway, I uh, want to look at what it means to be afraid, to be fearful, and what God himself says about it. Fear-mongering has <clears throat> been at the forefront of the society in which we live for the last several years. It's one of the tools of Satan that is really effective. Let's scare people into acting different, thinking different, reacting different than they did prior to the fear that's been brought over them. The question is, what does God say about it? And I think it's extremely important how the child of God acts and reacts. I'm not saying that we should never be afraid. You know, when Jesus came walking up on the water, the disciples were afraid. He said, be of good cheer as I, be not afraid. We've all been afraid. Our children have been afraid. We're probably afraid when uh, we were youngsters. But there are those who live on and on in fear. <clears throat> and I believe that the Bible teaches that is an outright sin. Matter of fact, it's an atrocious sin. A lot of people wouldn't put it up in that category, but I think if you study God's word and you read it and you take it for what it says, you will understand that yourself. In Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6, we're very familiar with those verses. Speaking of Jesus Christ, it says, For he will never leave us nor forsake us, that we may boldly say, The Lord is our helper, and I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. I can tell you right now, the fear we've seen the last two years didn't come from God. It didn't come from God at all. It came from man. They have driven this fear day in and day out by many different ways. Some of those ways are still going on. Some of the fear may have subsided by today, uh, what it was a year ago, but there's still plenty of it out there. I don't believe that the Lord's people should live in fear. We're to trust in the Lord with all our heart and not lean not to our own understanding. We're to trust in God, have confidence in God, not in man. The things that are happening today are nothing new. Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. But I hear, I, I, I'll tell you right now, it's been declared that everything's new today. Everything's new. Solomon said there's nothing new. What's been done or what is being done has been done. And as long as time goes on, it'll be done again. We ought not to fear. In Mark chapter 4, we look at a couple of verses, or one verse in particular, but in this Mark chapter 4, toward the end of the chapter, it's about the event of the disciples being in the ship when the great storms come upon the waters. And Jesus, in this particular event, is with them, asleep in the hull of the ship. And they go down there, and, and they're afraid. And, 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 he, <clears throat> and as he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Anytime Jesus is in your presence, whether you're on the literal ocean or not, there ought to be a great calm in your life. This is something that has been forsaken, even with many of God's people, and I know some of them, some of them family members. There's not no calmness about them. They've been taken by the fear that's been driven by man, and it's made a great effect in their life, not just for them, but for others. When Satan uses fear, and he does, it brings about division. 
on every level. There's division in families, divisions between brothers and sisters, uh, division in the nation. On and on goes the list. It, it's, a, it's what Satan loves to do. He lost the war, but there's still some battles that he's winning today before his time comes to an eternal end, if you would. Jesus went on to say, and he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? That word fearful there is, is a Greek word that we're going to find later in the book of Revelations. It literally means faithless. And for the child of God to be faithless, it's a sin. Faith, as we all know, is a fruit of the Spirit. If you're born of the Spirit of God and you're bearing faith, it ought to show forth. Jesus said to his own disciples, why are ye so fearful? If Jesus was here today, do you think he would announce to the multitudes in the land, his people especially, why are ye so fearful? There's fear unlike anything I've ever seen. You know, I've seen something last year that I'll uh, uh, I say again. It was a short saying. Fear does not stop death. Fear stops life. There's a whole lot of difference in living and existing. <clears throat> If you're just here to exist, I feel sorry for you. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 10, he says, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. He says, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. He's talking about right here and now. Not on the other side in glory. Yeah, that's going to be an abundant life that we can't imagine. But Jesus intended for us to fellowship with him, to walk with him each and every day, to trust in him, as that song we just sang said. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. I believe to live a life in the midst of something that man has created, this is no worse than many things that have come and passed in the past. But it's been made to be that way, and fear has overtaken many folks. Matter of fact, it's driven them to do things they wouldn't have ordinarily done, to make decisions they wasn't making, to act different toward others than they used to act. The lack of fellowship, the lack of so, getting together socially, which God made us as social beings. We need fellowship. We need to be one with the other. That, there's a great strength in that. That's why we were told not to forsake the assembling of ourselves as is the manner of some. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith. That's what he told his own disciples. You reckon if Jesus stood before us today or stood before a great number of his people, he could say the same thing? Why are you so f fearful? Why are you so fearful? Do you not have any faith at all? You know, I, I, I believe, I don't know this, but, but I, I'm, I'm pretty certain none, none of us have, have seen God himself or Jesus Christ with our own eye, literally. But we believe in Jesus Christ, do we not? We believe that he is real and that his promises are real and that they will be kept. That's what faith's all about, believing what Jesus said. Not what man said. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. When fear-mongering starts and great men who claim to be greatly wise and Oftentimes tell us lies. I've never seen so many lies going on. But as I told Suzanne, uh, ought, to be, uh, ought to be surprised. First lies ever told was believed. You know that? There was only two human beings on the earth. But first lie that was ever told was believed by Eve. The serpent, Satan himself, told the lie. And Eve believed it. So we ought not to be surprised at God's people believing the multitude of lies they're being spewed out of men's mouths. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. You know what that, that, the gist of that whole verse is? Once we begin to put our trust in man, our hearts depart from God, the Lord, the Lord of glory. 
the divine healer, the great physician. As Brother Don said last week, our high priest, there's one high priest, there's one apostle, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. But when we put our trust in man, that's where fear comes from. Are we boldly saying the Lord is our helper and I shall not fear what man shall do unto me? Or do we live and walk and breathe in fear? I, t- I preach this today because I don't want you to fear. We, we don't need to live in fear. You know, it says in the Bible that it was appointed unto men once to die. And then the judgment. We're going to die if the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't come back. Every one of us are going to die. It may be a car wreck. It may be a heart attack. It may be tragic and early in someone's life. It may be unexpected. It may be expected. Someone had lived a long life and getting down toward the end. Death is sure and certain. If you want to know what I think, I think if you peel the onion back, these people who are living in fear are so scared of death that they can't hardly function and go on. It's death that is driving the fear in them. And we ought not to have fear of death. But the Bible tells us that there are those who have done just that. We're told that God... Is our refuge. We're told in over in uh, Psalms 46 in the first verse, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Friends, this nation's in trouble. Things are in trouble in this country, and God is our refuge, a very present help. No one's going to help us out of the circumstances we're living in other than God. We're to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We're to put on the whole armor of God that we might stand against the wiles of the devil. Friends, I tell you, are we fearful? Are we faithless? Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. This is a tremendously important verse. Our fears are not derived from God. David said we should have no fear of death, did he not? Although, that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Again, death is something that's coming to each and every one of us if the Lord doesn't return And take us home. But I want you not to fear death. Death is just a crossing over. An opening your eyes in the presence of Jesus Christ. David said, I will fear no evil. David wasn't scared of death. David didn't say, I'm looking to die. I'm going to go out and see if I can get a sword thrown through me or an arrow. You and I are not looking to run out in front of a train. Walk in front of a semi-truck. But I'm telling you, don't live in the fear of death. There's something better. When we die, our eyes are immediately open in the presence of the Lord. Do you believe that? By faith, do we believe what God said? That our spirits immediately take flight and go home to be with the Lord? Do God's people out here in society that you know, and I know we know a lot of folks, Are they living in fear? I don't want you to live in fear if they are because you have nothing to fear but fear itself. God didn't give you the fear or or, or being afraid. He said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If you're walking with Jesus day in and day out in your life and you're feeling the presence of Jesus in your life, you oughtn't to be afraid of nothing, even death itself. And I feel certain that's what most people fear with what's going on today is death. I'm not telling you to go out and want to die, but you can't live and have the fear of death each and every day. 
your living won't amount to a whole lot. You won't be able to do things. You know, if you're fearful enough, you wouldn't get in a car because chances are you'd, you, you could have a wreck and end your life. You know, uh, there's all kinds of things we can do that, that might put an end to our life. Are we going to quit doing those things? You know, uh, you might get in an airplane and, and it might be the one plane in the whole year that crashes and you might be lost. You might die. Is that going to stop you from flying? You know, there's all kinds of things that can happen to us in life. But don't you put your hope in Jesus Christ? Don't you trust in Him to take care of you? No matter what comes along? Don't you understand when Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun, he meant what he said and said what he meant? That's reality. Diseases have taken people's lives for centuries. I've been studying not so much on this as I have on, on, on the, the disease of leprosy. Go study leprosy. I think if you'll study out leprosy, not only does it represent sin, but if you study the actual inf affliction itself, I think you'll choose what's going on today far over that. And for the record, I, I, some say, well, uh, you go back to the book of Leviticus and, and they quarantined them. Yeah, they did. They wore face coverings. Yeah, they did. Those that actually had symptoms and were sick, never did they do that for the entire population. That's Bible. That's the truth. We're not to live in fear. There's things worse than what we're seeing today, I'll assure you. Some of us have lived them in years gone by. There are no guarantees for tomorrow. The time we have is right now. We're not to live in fear, and I don't want you to live in fear. I want you to live life to its fullest. Jesus came that you might have life, and you might have it more abundantly. That doesn't mean we ought to use a little wisdom if you're sick and you don't feel well, you're really sick, you're running fever, you ought to stay at home. You know, God gave us the ability to think. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. And of love and of a sound mind. That means self-discipline and self-judgment. When things begin to happen in this world, we're to use sound judgment. The soundest judgment that you and I can ever make is to understand that God's fully aware of what's going on. And we're to put our trust in Him day in and day out. We're told by Solomon... Not to lean to our own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy steps. Do you believe in what's going on today that if you acknowledge God and everything you're doing that he will direct your steps? We're not to be scared or afraid. We're to live our life to its fullest. For each day is a blessing. Not knowing what might lay ahead. Like I said, we're all going to die. It's appointed once unto men to die and then the judgment. There, are be, there will be some that are alive and, and remain when Jesus Christ comes. Not sure if we want to be among those folks the way things are going, but needless to say, the Bible says it, and that's the way it'll be. We're not to have fear. A spirit, and that is derived from that Greek word that means faithless. God did not give us a faithless spirit, but a spirit of faith. He did not give us a spirit of fear, fear, but a spirit to be bold in calling upon the name of the Lord. That's exactly what he did. We go to read a verse out of Hebrews. You know, there are verse uh, chapter 2 and verse 15. You know, this has come along, and, I, and as I said, I believe at the root of, of, of most people's fear is death. But <clears throat> there are folks that have lived their entire life with that fear. Hebrews 2 and 15, let's get 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, <clears throat> he also himself likewise took part of the same, speaking of Jesus Christ, that through death he might destroy him that had power over death, and that is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death, same fear as we're seeing in the prior verse and the one coming up in Revelation 21, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. 
I don't want you to live life subject to bondage. Can't go anywhere, can't do anything because we're fearful that we might get sick and pass from this life. We serve a God far bigger than any disease that stands around here. There was no disease greater than sin, was there? No disease. And we all have that disease. And the cure for that disease was Jesus Christ. He paid for our sins with his precious blood. There is no disease greater than that. It is Jesus Christ, the keeper of our souls, the one that holds us up day in and day out that we're to look unto. We're not to be scared of what's going on. We're not to fear what man shall do unto us. We're to fear him who has power not only over the body but over the soul and able to cast body and soul into hell itself. Jesus is omnipotent in his power. When he speaks, it's done. When he commands, it stands fast. The word of God teaches us. We turn now to Revelations chapter 21. Verse 8, it says, But the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That is the eternal separation from God, hell itself. But I left one out. I want to read that again. It began in the first one, it said, but the fearful, but the fearful. Can you imagine that God himself would put being fearful in the same category as murder? Whoremongering, idolaters, unbelievers. That's what he said. Puts being fearful on a whole different level, does it not? I know every one of us time to time are afraid. Afraid of what's going to happen. But I believe it's a truly atrocious sin when you live your life day in and day out in fear. In fear of death. In fear. But the fearful... And the unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and liars, they shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Aren't you thankful that God, through His Son Jesus Christ, has forgiven each and every one of us of every sin that we've committed, even if we've committed the sin of living day in and day out with fear? Living in that bondage, as we're told in the book of Hebrews by Paul. Jesus Christ will deliver us. But you know, as I've quoted this verse many times over the last year, when it says, uh, bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. We're looking at the life that now is. Those that lived in bondage because they feared death all their lives, they're going to be delivered from that. But Jesus wants us to live an abundant life now. And you can't live an abundant life, a life filled with joy and peace, if you live in fear day in and day out. It can't be done. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Jesus Christ himself has declared to be with each and every one of us all the way to death. How could we have any fears at all? For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. His truth comforts us. The hope we have in Jesus Christ comforts us. His word, this is his rod and staff to us. It's the promises that he made to us. He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. He'll be with us right till the time we close our eyes and open them in his presence in heaven. What a, a, a sobering thought that is. What a, a thought of strength that is. That ought to give us strength to live our lives without fear of what man shall do unto us. I'm going to go and get a few verses here and, and head toward a close. I want to, I want to go to 1 John chapter 4. This verse really tells us what fear is and what you and I need to do to understand we ought not to be fearful. Verse 18 says, there is no fear in love. I say, well, how can that be, Brother Kenny? I mean, I, 
I love so-and-so, and I love so-and-so, and I'm still fearful and scared. And, but let's notice what it says. Perfect love casteth out fear. There it is. I, that's why I'm excused. My love's not perfect. You're excused. Your love's not perfect. But there is one whose love is perfect, and his name is Jesus Christ. There's nobody can cast out your fears apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care what you fear. It doesn't have to be what's going on today. It can be anything else. But don't fear death. Jesus promised to be with you unto the very end. Perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. Fear tortures. You can't live a life, abundant life. You can't live a full life if you live it in fear. I know people uh, that are close, that are living in fear. They've been in fear since day one and still are. Done everything they thought was possibly right and they're still living in fear. Friends, our only hope is in Jesus Christ. It's not in men. If we're trusting in men, cursed we are, says God. Are we trusting in God for this one? For this ailment, this affliction, there'll be another affliction come along. This ain't, the, this ain't the last of all things unless the Lord returns and puts an end to it. And I pray, come quickly, Lord. It's not. Live abundantly. Don't let this thing drive what you do. Don't let it scare you to death. Jesus said, I'm with you. I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. Perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. You know, the first thing you got to understand is Jesus is not going to leave you. But to understand that, you got to understand how much Jesus loves you and how much God the Father loves you. For God loved you so much that he gave his son for your sins. He gave his perfect sinless son for your sins. For God so loved the world, God so loved his chosen, that he gave his only begotten son to die in their room instead for their sins, for their wrongs. His love is beyond anything that you and I can imagine. His love is perfect. We're told that because of Jesus Christ's love, Jesus himself laid down his life. Men didn't take his life. He laid down his life, and he was able to take his life back. He laid it down because he loved each and every one of us. We know that love was from everlasting to everlasting. Jeremiah 31 and 3 says, The Lord hath appeared unto me of old, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, and with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Do you realize that if God had loves you today, there's never been a time in, 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 in ever that he hadn't loved you? That's what everlasting to everlasting is. But God commendeth his love toward you. And while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Christ didn't die for good folks. Matter of fact, Christ died for those who were evil, those who hated him. When you begin to understand how much God loves you, regardless, you see, we were chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Do you understand that God sees you as holy? I don't know how holy you think you may be or may not be, but you're blameless. You've been made blameless by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even for the sins that you and I have not committed going forward. I tell you what, that, that's a love that you and I cannot understand. It's an unconditional love. You know, people have a problem understanding how they may love this person or that person in heaven. There's a lot of things that people get confused about. They do error not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God is the major problem. But you and I have no understanding of what perfect love is. Perfect love. Jesus Christ has perfect love, unconditional love. 
For the children not being born yet, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the elect might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. The choices that God made were made before you and I ever done anything good or bad. Before the foundation of the world. Why? Because he loved you with an everlasting love. When you begin to understand how much God loved you, and then he promised to never leave you nor forsake you, then how can we have any fear of anything in this world, regardless of what it might be? Don't live your life in fear. Don't be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid, Jesus said. Walk with Jesus. Talk with Jesus. Be close to Jesus. Wake up with him in the morning. Go to bed with him at night. Tell him your troubles and pray that he will relieve you of your troubles, your fears, the things that might scare you from time to time. We don't need to live in fear. We don't need to be scared and afraid all the time. Not to mention it's, it is a sin, but it's torture. It's torment. And that's the absolute truth. Nothing will make your life any worse than being scared all the time. It'll torture you. If you're worried about dying continuously, you're going to have a hard time living any. We know that... <clears throat> Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus Christ loved you so much, he laid down his life for you. There is no love any greater than that according to the word of God. That's why we have nothing to fear. Our God is bigger than our fears. Our God is bigger than the problems that exist today or them that will come in the future. There's plenty of them in this country, but our God is far greater and far bigger than anything that we're facing today. These things are little upside the God that we serve. I want to go to Romans chapter 8 and read these verses, and we'll close with these pertaining to the love of God. Romans chapter 8, again in verse 35. <clears throat> Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword? As you read these verses, and they're, they're good verses to read every day, you'll come to find out that there's nothing taking place in your life that will ever separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. And if he loves you with that kind of love, he's someone you can call upon very frequently. He's someone that can help you in time of need. He's a very present help. He is our refuge. He is our rock. Goes on as is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. How do you conquer your fear? Through Jesus Christ. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. If you're living in fear, you need to read the Word of God more often and be inspired, be lifted up and strengthened by what Jesus himself said. You can conquer fear if you have it. Any of God's children can, but they have to look unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You can't do it on your own. Satan is stronger than you are, but he's not stronger than our God. Our God has all power in heaven and earth. It goes on, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. You know, if Jesus Christ loves us with that kind of love, and he goes to that extent for us, that one day we'll live in a place where the troubles and the problems of this life will never be or exist any longer. How can any of us live with any type of fear? Matter of fact, what a day it'll be when our Jesus we shall see. When we look up on his face at the one who saved us by his grace. That day's coming. It's a promise. He came the first time and we're waiting for his return. But until then, Jesus wants you to live an abundant life to the best of your ability. Don't live in fear. Don't be scared. Men are going to try to scare you. They've tried to scare everybody they could in this country. I've never seen anything like it, and a lot of people have fallen for it. 
Don't be scared. Trust in Jesus with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Don't trust men. There ain't many men that's fit to trust. I've, I've come to believe that outside of the Word of God, it, it's very, very difficult to find anything that's true anymore. If you want truth, go to the Word of God. It gives us the truth about fear. Even though it's hard for me to imagine that being fearful is on the same level of murder. Isn't, isn't that hard to understand? Isn't that something you, it's just hard to believe almost? I didn't make that up. That's what God's Word says. But the fearful, let's don't be fearful. I know God will give you, forgive you for that sin, but that word literally means faithless, timid. Let's not be that way. Let's trust in God. Be strong in the faith and in the power of His might. That's what we need to be strong in the faith, to walk in faith <clears throat> and not walk by sight. Walk according to the promises of Almighty God. May God bless us to do that. May God bless each one of us. And, 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 and send this message to your friends. Somebody that's scared, tell them they've got nothing to be afraid of. Put their trust in Jesus Christ. He is our strength. He is our hope. He is the one that will help conquer any fear or trouble that you have. A lot of people don't understand that, but the only way we conquer anything in this world is through Jesus Christ. May Jesus bless us to do so. I thank you for your attention, and I hope you receive a blessing from the reading of God's Word, and, and it helps us as we continue on in this journey and the world in which we're living today. And May we give Him all the praise, honor, and glory. You know, the Bible says, There shall no flesh glory in His presence. I give Jesus Christ all the praise and all the glory.